Hello, thanks for joining us for today's Movie Fun. The film version of the musical Jersey Boys is released and Clint Eastwood is the unlikely director. It won the Golden Bear and Best Actor Awards at the Berlin Film Festival. The chilly Chinese whodunit thriller Black Coal Thin Ice hit cinemas. And our French pick of the week, the bittersweet melodrama Paris Follies, sees Isabelle Huppert play a farmer's wife. And let's find out more from our film critic, Lisa Nesselson. Hello, Lisa. Hello, Eve. Thanks for being here. Now, we're starting with Jersey Boys, the tale of the 1960s pop group The Four Seasons. It was a stage musical and it's been brought to the silver screen by Clint Eastwood. You want to hear the real story? I'm the one you want to talk to, Tommy DeVito. If it wasn't for me, we all would have wound up with a bullet in our head. Friends like that, you should change your name to Sinatra. I'm going to be as big as Sinatra. I would love to introduce you to a new discovery of mine, Frankie Valli. Dream of wild, I heard them all, but I never heard a voice like Frankie Valli's. I know I need to write for this voice. Thank you. The world is going to hear that voice. You want me to produce your songs? Find a name and a sound, and then we can make something happen. There we go, a little taste of Jersey Boys. Now, it's the story of the 60s band, The Four Seasons. Tell us more. It's the story of four teenagers who got themselves out of New Jersey and onto the <laughs> national stage. Because back in the 1950s, your options were really very limited, especially if you didn't go on to higher education. You could join the army, you could join the mob, the mafia, or you could think of something else to get out of the neighborhood. It was a time when records and music and live performance were incredibly influential. And these four guys had a knack for coming up with songs in short order that became national hits. And Clint Eastwood is the director. Now he specialized in crime dramas, westerns, sports films. Initially, this seems quite a weird choice for him to do a musical, is it? Even I thought that when I first heard it, and then I stopped and thought, well, no, the man's been a musician all his life. He has actually uh, composed the scores or contributed to the scores of, two, of at least seven of the films he's directed. Um, and he's made movies about music in the past, uh, Bird starring uh, Forrest Whitaker as Charlie Parker, the jazz musician, and a lesser seen film that's also quite wonderful, Honky Tonk Man. And um, I think more than that, he has a feel for the music and for the ins and outs oh, of working your way up the showbiz ladder, because certainly he started out in, in television and, uh, and spaghetti westerns, and today he's an elder statesman. I translated a book about Clint Eastwood from French into English in 1985, and if you had told me that now he would still be at the height of his powers, it w I would have been surprised, but I'm, I'm so glad he's still working. So did he pull it off then? Well, you know, if, if it's true what they tell us in the movie, uh, like I said, the group put their songs together incredibly quickly, so this is a little something, a review I jotted down on the way here. <clears throat> It's Really Good by Clint Eastwood. Go see the movies, what I say. And just by chance, it's out here first in France, so you can buy a ticket right away. Ooh, 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 ooh. Cause Frankie Valley sings like this. <laughs> He's got a voice you can't dismiss. And a story too. There's nothing sweller than singing a cappella. The staging and performances are grand. Boom, boom, boom. Later or sooner, you just might need a crooner. And Jersey Boys is good to beat the band. See it. <laughs> okay, I don't know how to react to that, but very well done. <laughs> Maybe you should consider a different career, Ooh. Lisa. Well, let's move on to um, a murder mystery set in northern China now. Black Coal Thin Ice is directed by Yinan Jiao. Here's a rather unpleasant clip from the film. That was from Black Coal Thin Ice, a hand in the coal. It's all rather unpleasant. Does it get any better than that? 
Uh, for the disembodied body parts, no, definitely not. And for the people who are still alive, uh, no, not really. I mean, often when you go to the movies, part of the pleasure is that you identify with one or more of the characters. I would not to, like to be anybody in this movie. I was very grateful that I was far away from China in 1999. The film starts in 1999, and then it also takes place in 2004 because there is this, uh, this murder mystery, and one of the detectives who was assigned to it in 1999, things work out very badly when we meet him again in 2004, there seem to be copycat crimes going on. Something reminds him of what happened before. Uh, he's an alcoholic, but he's absolutely driven to get to the bottom of it himself. Now, when we think of recent neo-noir films like Sin City, Kiss Kiss, Bang Bang and Drive, we think about their style, how amazing they were to watch. Um, is this like that? Not really. I mean, it's just as compelling, but its roots are in social realism. It has a very, very real, very creepy feeling to it. No overt flourishes. It skillfully builds a mood, a very, very creepy mood. Um, and uh, one French critic called it addictive because you, you're, you're off balance. You don't really know what's going to happen next, and yet you want to find out. It remains enigmatic, and yet all the pieces do come together in the end. And uh, the Chinese title, I'm told, translates as Fireworks in Broad Daylight. Okay. Interesting, okay. That is um, Black Hole Thin Ice. Let's move on now to our French pick of the week, Paris Folly. Now, the French actress, a.k.a. Ice Queen diva, <laughs> um, Isabelle Huppert, stars as a farmer's wife. Fill us in the, on the rest. Uh, yes, some people might be taken aback that Isabelle Huppert, the Ice Queen, is playing a farmer's wife, but in fact, she can play anything, and I wish people would write more sort of bittersweet comic roles for her. She's wonderful here as a woman who lives on a cattle farm in Normandy, where she raises a Charolais cows with her husband, played by... Uh, Jean-Pierre Darussin, they have a solid, mutually supportive relationship. They love each other. They love what they do for a living. But Hubert's Brigitte is, um, uh, she's more spontaneous and fanciful than her down-to-earth husband is. And she's suffering from a rash that no local doctor can seem to treat. So she decides to take a trip to Paris to have a specialist look at it. At least that's what she says she's doing. The capital is only two hours away by train, but it is a world away in terms of temptations and possibilities. And so we suit Paris through the eyes of a smart, modern French woman who happens to have been married for several decades and lives full-time out in the country. Okay, and this film and films like The Best Exotic Marigold Hotel, um, is there a market now for these films and for a different audience, shall I call them older people? <laughs> well, I'm between those <laughs> quote marks or inverted commas. But when I went to see the movie in the cinema, uh, the people around me were in their 20s and 30s, as well as my age and older. Um, I, I think there are definitely stories for older moviegoers because we grew up going to the movies and, and we just want to go and sit in the cinema with other people. And I hope this travels because Isabelle Huppert, you, you know, is, is uh, known more than some people are. She's worked in English on and off. But, uh, but I do think it's, it's, a, it's a bittersweet, funny, very enjoyable story about not a midlife crisis but a midlife thinking about having a midlife crisis okay all right that was paris follies now as we're talking about age in our next show i'm going to be talking to keanu reeves who's turning 50 this year he's here in paris for the champs Elysees film festival where he's presenting two films i tried to get a reaction from him about growing older here he is as cool as ever uh it's fantastic glad to be here does anything, you're not worried about aging or? Of course, yeah, aging means death. Yeah, I'm totally freaked out. <laughs> you don't but, see uh, me. I am. But, uh, you know, it's, it's okay. Certainly didn't seem very freaked out, but he's, apparently he is very freaked out about turning older. He's here in Paris with two films. One of them is a documentary called Side by Side, and it's about the transition of film into the digital age. Now, you've seen it, haven't you? I have, and um, I think it's a very, very important piece of work. Uh, Keanu Reeves went around the world speaking to the most important film directors and the most important directors of photography about this transition, which I personally think is right up there with global warming and climate change as a catastrophe in the making. If you think about it, uh, you probably, if you used to put film in an actual camera, you probably stopped doing that a while ago and take digital photos with your your smartphone or with, the, with, a, with a digital camera. And we're doing that in cinemas. We're throwing out the projectors. We're throwing out the, the beauty and the delicacy delicacy of film and we're going for something way too crispy, way too sharp that we may not be able to see years from now. Celluloid has served us well for a hundred years. You can hold it up to the light. You can see what it is. Now movies are on hard drives. When was the last time you could stare at your hard drive and say, I know exactly what's in that?
Never. <laughs> okay, well, there's no doubt whose side you're on, Lisa. <laughs> um, and we'll hear more from Keanu Reeves and what he thinks about it in Encore later this week. Now, just before we go, the French director Jean Epstein has two films back in French cinemas. Now, he's remembered primarily for his adaptation of Al Edgar Allan Poe's The Fall of the House of Usher. Tell us some more about what we can see. Well, Jean Epstein is part of the first wave of people who wrote about cinema, who were critics and theorists, who actually went on to make movies. And this was decades before the French New Wave did the same thing. He was a part of, of a group of very talented people, one of the first female filmmakers, Jumaine Dulac, Abel Gans, Mercer de Lerbier, who used, were making silent movies. They had to make silent movies. And uh, they used the poetic and the, and the gorgeous qualities that were possible. Uh, Jean Epstein appreciated the possibilities of slow motion, he anthropomorphized inanimate objects, and we owe an enormous debt to his sister, Marie Epstein, born in 1899, who devoted the last decades of her life to gathering up all the stuff. It's been restored. There is a magnificent box set of everything he, had, he ever did, and if you read French, they've re-released all of his theoretical writings, which are still quite readable today. Okay, Lisa, thank you very much once again for your words of wisdom. And we're going to leave you with pictures from John Epstein's The Fall of the House of Usher. Thanks for watching. See you next time.